The Clyde Beatty Show. The world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with an exciting adventure from his brilliant career. The circus means thrills, excitement, snarling jungle beasts. The circus means fun for young folks and old. But under the big top, you see only a part of the story. The real drama comes behind the scenes, where 500 people live as one family, where Clyde Beatty constantly risks death in the most dangerous act on earth. This master of the big cats has journeyed to Africa and India, hunting down his beasts in their native jungle. All of this is part of the Clyde Beatty story. Here is the dramatic story entitled, Dangerous Ambition. Phoenix, Arizona was blistering under the mid-morning sun as my wife Harriet and I sat in my dressing room on the circus lot. Things were fairly calm and peaceful as we prepared for the second day of our two-day stand. But looking back, I realized it was only the proverbial calm before the storm. I've always prided myself on knowing the people who work for me, knowing their virtues and capabilities, their faults and troubles. But that gets to be a full-time job when almost 500 people are involved. At any rate... I had no idea of the trouble that was to develop that day. But while I sat in my dressing room, the groundwork for plenty of trouble was taking shape over in the menagerie tent. All right, so what are you going to do, Hank? Just because you're gaga over a cute little tight wire walker don't mean you've got to go around like a zombie, does it? Uh, you just don't understand, Corny. So because I'm a clown, I'm not supposed to know about such things? I've fallen for other gals, but Doris, well... Yeah, I know. Doris is different. Yeah, that's what I mean. Ah, she's wonderful. Yeah, but what chance have I got with her? Me, a cage boy, nursemaid to a bunch of lions and tigers. Well, you're also Beatty's gun boy as he sits in outside the arena. You're a pretty important guy to him when his act's on. Oh, sure. Handing him fresh blank guns and whips, setting up the pedestals before the cats come in. Yeah, it's really something. Well, somebody's got to do it and do it right. Ah, stow it, Corny. I'm not kidding myself. Doris isn't going to double time it with somebody that isn't doing something big like... Well, like Darcy, for instance. Darcy, the daring young man on a flying trapeze. Yeah. You gotta admit his act's a big hit, Corny. And he's in love with Doris, too. Now, what chance have I got against that kind of competition? Hey, look, Hank. I may be just a clown, but I got more sense than some people might think. And I know Doris isn't impressed by some monkey hanging by his heels on a trapeze. And I know she isn't impressed by a guy throwing a slab of meat to a lion, either. Ah, oh, now you're being just plain stupid. It's not what you do. It's what kind of a guy you are, it counts. Nuts. Okay, we're right back where we started. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to ask Mr. Beatty for a chance to start doing some animal training. It's high time I got going with a small act of my own. Oh, buddy, you are crazy. Love does the weirdest things to a guy. But I guess if that's what you want, it's your funeral. Maybe. Anyway, I'm going over and talk to him right now. I'll see you later, Corny. Yeah, so long, Hank, and good luck. the clouds as good today as yesterday, Clyde. I was afraid this heat might hurt the house. Uh, I was a little concerned about that myself, Harriet. But apparently, the lure of the circus is still stronger than the lure of air conditioning, <laughs> luckily for us. You know, Phoenix is a wonderful town. I wouldn't mind settling down here when the time comes. <laughs> What's so funny about that? <laughs> you say that about practically every town we play. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I do it that. <laughs> Come in. Excuse me, Mr. Beatty. Uh, uh, could I talk to you for a minute? Oh, sure thing, Hank. Have a seat. Thanks. Hello, Mrs. Beatty. Well, how are you today, Hank? Oh, all right, I guess. Hey, you don't sound very convincing. What's on your mind? Well, I ain't a body with my problems, but... Maybe, maybe I'd better go so you two can talk in private. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Beatty. I don't mind if you stay. In fact, you might have some ideas that would help. Well, you know, Clyde and I both want to help you if you're in trouble, Hank. What is it? Oh, it's not what you'd call trouble, I guess. It, well, I'm in love. Hmm. <laughs> you are in trouble then, Hank. Who's the lucky girl? Doris Murray. You know in the tight wire act. Oh, sure. Why, you've got good taste, Hank. She's a nice girl. She certainly is. You're lucky. That's just it. I'm not lucky. Oh, I guess she likes me all right, but... Well, I couldn't expect her to fall in love with me as well as long as I'm just a cage boy. Well, I wouldn't take that attitude, Hank. After all, it... Please, Mr. Beatty, 
A girl like Doris isn't going to waste her time on some guy that's, well, not getting anywhere. Well, supposing you're right. How can I help you? I've been a cage boy for over two years now, Mr. Beatty. I learned a lot about the cats, and, well, I I want a chance to learn the rest. I want to be a trainer. Uh, you're, uh, you're quite sure that's what you want, Hank? Well, yes, sir, I am. But, Hank, you must know the danger involved. Well, sure I do. But I'm not scared of those cats. Well, I could handle them if I had a chance. And what do you say, Mr. Beatty? Uh, well, I wasn't expecting anything quite like this, Hank. You've, you've sort of taken me by surprise. I, I'll tell you what. I'll give it some thought, and we'll talk more about it later on. This isn't something you just rush into, you know. Well, yeah, but... Well, I've got to know soon. You see, my future, my whole life depends on your decision. Yes, I know. Your whole life. <laughs> In just a moment, we will continue with the Clyde Beatty adventure, Dangerous Ambition. Here is Clyde Beatty to continue our story. Although I was taken by surprise when Hank informed me he wanted to become a trainer, I could well understand his desire to do something big. Love oftentimes furnishes the motive for such hopes, but... Well, Hank's problem was not a simple one. Many things besides love were to complicate his ambition, things which I found myself unable to mention while he was in my dressing room. But after he left, Harriet and I discussed the situation. Poor Hank. It seems everybody has their problems, doesn't it, Clyde? Yeah, only his is worse than most. Hmm? Well, what do you mean by this? If he's made up his mind to become a trainer, that's that, isn't it? I'm afraid that's what he thinks, all right, but he's put a lot of the load on my shoulders, Harriet. He wants me to show him the ropes and teach him what I know. Well, that's only natural. You know about all there is to know. And I can vouch for the fact that you're a good teacher. But you don't understand, Harriet. For years now, I've been on the lookout for a good prospect, somebody I could train to eventually take over my act. I'd be only too glad for somebody to benefit from my experience. But there's just one hitch to the idea. Oh, meaning? Meaning, in all these years, I've never had a cage boy who had the natural ability and wanted to take it up. Oh, but Hank wants to do it, and he's certainly not afraid. I know. In fact, I'm afraid he isn't afraid enough. He just doesn't have the right temperament for it. Oh, I hadn't thought of it just that way. But I guess you're right. I know I'm right. He's got the desire and the courage necessary, but he doesn't have the patience. He gets too nervous and excited, just even working outside the arena. But, Clyde, if that's the way you feel, don't you think you should have told him? Yeah, I suppose so. But it's hard to come right out and dash cold water on a man's dreams. I hate to have to tell him all that. No, I don't blame you, dear. But you must remember it's for his own good. He'll understand. I wonder. I'm going over to see May for a minute. Shall I tell Hank you want to talk to him again? <laughs> My little fixer. <laughs> okay, I guess I may as well get it over with. You'll probably find him in the menagerie tent. All right, Clyde. See you later. <laughs> Sure, Doris. He's going to give me my big break. Going to let me learn the trainer's business. What do you think of that? Why, I guess it's fine, Hank, if that's what you want. If that's what I... Of course that's what I want. You don't think I'm going to be a cage boy forever, do you? No, but gee, it doesn't Why, think... someday I'll have an act of my own, and... Well, Beatty can't go on forever, you know. I might even get to take over his act in a few years, be a headliner myself. Why is that so important, Hank? I didn't know you felt that way. <laughs> Can't you guess why I want that? Why, everybody wants to do something big and spectacular. But, well, I've got a special reason. Oh, oh here you are, Hank. Hello, Doris. Hi, Miss Beatty. Oh, pardon me for interrupting, kids, but Clyde wanted me to ask you to stop by his dressing room when you have a minute, Hank. He wants to talk to you about that, uh, uh or about what you discussed earlier. Oh, sure. I'll go over now. Uh, uh, thanks, Mrs. Beatty. I'll, I'll see you later, Doris. Bye, Hank. Big lug. Do you know what he wants to do, Miss Beatty? Yes, I'm afraid I do. How do you like that? I start falling for one of the few guys in the circus that doesn't have his neck stuck out to here, and he gets a bee in his bonnet to be a wild animal trainer. I give up. Are you in love with him, Doris? Yes. <laughs> yes, I guess I am, Miss Beatty. And you wouldn't want him to become a trainer? Heavens no, that'd spoil everything. Oh, I don't think I could take it, being married to somebody in that kind of work. Knowing any day he might be... Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Beatty. Oh, that's all right, Doris. 
I used to feel exactly the same way. Sometimes I still do. But Clyde and I have an understanding. An understanding? Yes. We never discuss the danger in his act. In fact, we've almost reached the point where we don't think about it. Oh, of course, it's always in the back of our minds, I suppose. Well, I don't want to go through what you've had to go through all these years. Life's too short. <laughs> well, fortunately, you won't have to, Doris. Clyde is convinced that Hank would never make a trainer. That's what he wanted to see him about, to tell him. Really? Oh, Miss Beatty, that's wonderful. I guess it'll be quite a blow to Hank, but well, he'll get over it. Of course he will. I think his biggest reason for wanting to be a trainer was to impress you. <laughs> and all the time, I wouldn't tell him how I felt for... Oh, for fear of spoiling his fondest dream. That's a kiss. <laughs> Give him a chance to think over what Clyde tells him. Then, after the performance this afternoon, go to him. Tell him how you feel. That's a swell idea, Miss Beatty. I'll do it. Good. I believe everything is going to turn out all right after all. I only hope Clyde can make Hank see that it's all for the best. Believe me, Hank, it, well, it hasn't been easy telling you this. But I, I felt I had to be honest with you, and... Well, that's the way it is. But, Mr. Beatty, you're wrong. I just know you're wrong. I wish I were, but I think down inside, you know as well as I do that I'm right. Now, don't let it get you down. There are lots better ways to make a living. Sure. But I noticed you didn't take them up. You've got me there. And I'd have felt just as badly as you do if somebody told me I wasn't suited for wild animal training. I bet you wouldn't have listened to them. Probably not, but... I'm as sure of what I told you as I can be, and you'll be much better off doing something else, something you're really suited for. Well, if that's your final decision, I... I guess there's no need for me taking up any more of your time, Mr. Baby. I'm sorry, Hank, but that is my decision, and I'm glad you've taken it so well. Yeah. I'll see you later, Mr. Baby. So long. <laughs> I've been looking all over for you. Let's go put on a feed bag. Uh, you go ahead, Corny. I'm not hungry. Hey, you look lower than a midget thin step. What's eating you now? Ah, uh, nothing. Come on, sport. Tell Uncle Corny what's up. Well, all those big plans I was talking about this morning. You know about being an animal trainer? Mm-hmm. Well, it looks like I'll have to find myself another circus if I want to get into that. Oh, the boss man lowered the boom, huh? Yeah, but in a nice way. Told me I wasn't cut out to handle a big cat. Well, Beatty ought to know if anybody does. Yeah, I suppose so. Only I don't give up easy, Corny. What do you mean by that? Hey, look, kid. Take the master's advice. Forget the whole thing. I won't forget it. I'll prove he's wrong. I'll show him and everybody else I can handle those cats. Oh, brother. As I said before, love does the weirdest things to a guy. I'll get out of here and leave me alone, Corny. Okay, okay. I'm going over to the cook tent. I'll bring you a sandwich or something. Huh? Oh, never mind the sandwich. I told you I wasn't hungry. I just want to be left alone. Okay, Greta. See you later. <laughs> You're still here, Clyde. Did you talk to Hank? Yeah, I talked to him. I feel like I hear you. Well, don't, darling. I had a talk with Doris, and guess what? She's crazy about Hank, just the way he is. She told me she wouldn't want him to become a trainer for anything. Really? Well, well that's wonderful. But she should tell Hank that. It, it, it might make him feel better. Of course it would. And she's going to right after the matinee. Well, that's a load off my mind. If he's as much in love with her as he seems to be, that'll be just enough to make him forget he ever wanted to train lions and tigers. How did he react to what you told him? Oh, he took it pretty well. He was hurt from getting around that. But he's smart enough to realize I was only trying to save him a lot of grief. Oh, I'm glad he took it that way. So am I. Hank's a good boy. As a matter of fact, I've been thinking of working him into something bigger and better anyway. I, I might put him in charge of a rigging crew. Oh, I'll bet he'd like that. And so would Doris. Mr. Beatty! Mr. Beatty! Yes, come in. Hey, Mr. Beatty, come quick. It's Hank. Well, what's the matter? What is it? Uh, Hank let some cats in the arena, and he's in there with him trying to wake them. What? Come on. Clyde, hurry. He'll be killed. We return to the Clyde Beatty Show after this important message from our sponsor.
And now, back to Clyde Beatty and his story, Dangerous Ambition. The Clyde Beatty Circus was in Phoenix, Arizona. It was morning of the second day stand when Clyde was approached by his cage boy, Hank, who wanted to learn to be an animal trainer. Clyde had the unpleasant duty of telling Hank that he was unsuited for such work due to his nervousness and impatience. But Clyde and Harriet soon learned that Hank wasn't convinced when Corny the clown burst into their dressing room a short time later with the news that Hank was in the steel arena trying to work some of the big cats. I ran right over as soon as I saw what he was doing, Mr. Beatty. I just hope we're not too late. Here, here, duck under the flap. Right. He's still okay. Hey, look, he's got three lions in there. Hey, Hank, get out of that arena. Another chance, Mr. Beatty. What's this? Mr. Beatty, look! That lion! Hank, watch it behind you! Ah! Watch Corno behind you! He's a corner, Mr. Beatty! Corny, go open the tunnel gate and rattle it quick! Yes, sir! The lion had Hank by an arm, shaking him as a terrier would shake a rat. As I rushed to the safety cage door and got inside the arena, I could only hope Congo wouldn't change his grip to Hank's throat. Quickly, I grabbed the chair and blank gun Hank had dropped and rushed at Congo. Congo! Get back there! Luck was with me. The shots distracted the huge cat and he loosened his grip on Hank's arm. I jabbed the legs of the chair in his face and moved to stride Hank's body. Grab that gate, Corny! Congo and the other two lions reacted to the sound as I had hoped. They dashed toward the tunnel leading back to their cages and disappeared. I heard the gate slam shut behind them and turned my attention to Hank. His arm was bleeding badly. How is he, Mr. Betty? I don't know. Open the door so I can get him out of here. Can I help you? Yeah. Easy now. Holy smoke. Look at that arm. Careful. Watch the door here. All right. Okay. Now let's get him outside. Uh, Put him down right here. Easy. I'll run get the doc, Mr. Beatty. Wait, Corny. Doc Miller's in town. We'll have to get him to a hospital. Run, get Donovan's car out front. Hurry. I'll be back in a second. Clyde. Clyde, is he... All right. He's losing a lot of blood, Harriet. We got to get him to a hospital in a hurry. Clyde. Give me your belt. I got to try to stop some of this bleeding. Oh, here. Can I help? Oh. Ease him over. There. Look. The back of his head. Yeah. Congo did a thorough job. Mr. Beatty, I... Don't, don't try to talk now, Hank. We'll have you fixed up in no time. You just stay quiet. Good. Help me get him in the back seat. There. I'll stay back here with him. You better get in front with Corny, Harriet. Okay, step on it, Corny. We roared off the lot and into the side street where the motorcycle took the lead. Faster, Corny. Every second counts now. can. Maybe it's... Maybe it's worse than I thought. Oh, poor Hank. I never thought he'd do anything so foolish. Neither did I. I guess he just wanted to prove to himself and everybody else that he could handle the cats. Mm. Mr. Beatty? Yes. Oh, doctor, how is he? Well, well, he's going to be all right. Oh, thank Uh, heaven. Yes, and we can thank your husband, too, Mrs. Beatty. If he hadn't applied that tourniquet above the severed artery in the boy's arm, I'm afraid he'd have bled to death. What about the head wound, Doctor? Fortunately, it was only a laceration, not too deep. A few stitches took care of it. And, and his arm, it'll be okay. He, he won't... Uh... No, he won't lose it, if that's what's worrying you, Mr. Beatty. It'll be as good as new before too long. Oh, huh. that's wonderful news, Doctor. Is, is he conscious? Yes, he's fully conscious now. Although still suffering slight shock, of course. Would you like to see him? Oh, oh, would yes. it be all right? Oh, yes. Follow me. I'll show you his room. <laughs> Go right on in, folks. I'll check on him a bit later. Thanks, Jackie. Well, Hank, the doctor says you'll be good as new in no time. You gave us quite a scare, Hank. Oh, I, I am sorry, Mr. Bay. I, I should have more sense. It's all right, Hank. Foolish, yes, but I've got to admire your courage, even so. I know now that you were right all along. I, 
I guess I always knew it. Just too stubborn to admit it. Let's not talk about that, Hank. It's all over now. Yeah. I guess everything's over now. I, I really made a mess of things. Oh, no, it isn't as bad as all that. I... I guess I never could amount to much anyway. I, I'll just be satisfied being a cage boy from now on. Why, well, is it? Uh, Hank, I'm afraid your days as a cage boy are over. But, well, I guess I deserve to be fine. I, I don't blame you, Mr. Beatty. <laughs> you didn't let me finish, Hank. I'm not firing you. From now on, you're going to be in charge of a rigging crew. And who knows, someday you might even be boss canvas man. In charge of that? You're, you're not kidding me, are you? <laughs> of course not, Hank. God's been thinking for a long time about giving you a bigger job. I guess I'm a bit selfish or I'd have done it sooner. You see, Hank, you did a fine job as my arena assistant and... Well, I'll hate to lose you. Oh, gee, Mr. Beatty, I... I, I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. You just hurry up and get well and out of here. You'll have to catch up to us somewhere along the route later on. Oh, I'll see who it is. Lady, thank you. Is he his fine, daughter? Come in. A visitor for you, Hank. Oh, thank you, big dope. The big lovable dope. Hey, I heard that. You were supposed to hear it. Gee, I, I was afraid the way I followed things up, you wouldn't even speak to me. But all I wanted was to do something big, make a big impression on you. You didn't have to try getting yourself killed to do that, you know. You get this straight right now. I wouldn't have a thing to do with you if you were an animal trainer. Oh, don't worry, baby. That's all out of my system. But do you think you could go for a guy who's in charge of a, a rigging crew? If his name was Hank, I could. Oh, Clyde. What's the matter, Harriet? I just glanced at my watch. Look at the time. Good grief. We'd better rush back to the lot. It's almost time for the first performance. Oh, is it that late? We can just about make it. Yeah, I'll be back later, Hank. You'll do nothing of the kind, Doris. What? But... You'll stay here with Hank for a little while. Then you can shop around, get him some fruit, magazines, anything to make him comfortable. And during afternoon visiting hours, you're to keep him company. Doctor's orders. Doctor's orders? <laughs> Dr. Beatty, that is. <laughs> <laughs> Clyde Beatty will be back in just a moment with an exciting preview of next week's adventure. But first... Here is a preview of an adventure the Beatty's had in Mexico. It is entitled, Contest in Danger. I still can't understand what got into Anna May. I've been a mother to that elephant, and still she charged me today. Mm -hmm. It almost seems like she was blaming me for Conchita getting poisoned. Seems our troubles always come in bunches. Here we come to Mexico, thinking it'd be a real holiday, and... Clyde. Clyde, you're not listening to me. Something's on your mind. Hmm? Is Conchita worse than you let me know? Uh, no, but uh, I talked to Dr. Ains on the phone. Oh? The poison that made Conchita Lopez sick was potassium cyanide. Potassium cyanide? A trace, not a dangerous amount. And Harriet... Yes, sir? Potassium cyanide acts instantaneously. Well, Conchita said she drank the coffee 30 or 40 minutes before her attack, and nothing else after that. That's right, Harriet. Potassium cyanide, a trace, not a dangerous amount, taken at the last moment. That means that... That... That Conchita Lopez poisoned herself. That is a short scene from the episode you'll hear next, Contest in Danger. All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show was produced by Shirley Thomas. Dangerous Ambition was written by Robert T. Smith. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>